going to start timing now. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I am even more of a generalist than Bill, so you're in good company, Bill. That, um, and as not a research faculty, I'm going to take a slightly different approach to telling you a little bit about what I do. Um, I'm obsessed with, I won't say interested, I'm obsessed with ecology, as um, many of you have first-hand experience with, and that's in a general way, more specifically, community ecology, especially uh, plant-animal interactions, which is to say that I'm someone who really enjoys counting how many times a hummingbird visits a flower. Um, beyond that, uh, as many of you know, I, my primary focus in SEAS is teaching the 509 course ecology. This is the core ecology course that 80% of the incoming students take. So it's a, it's a key experience of a lot of the students in SEAS, and it's a lecture, but also very much a field lab experience. And so in doing that, and in, in lecture ecology, we really get into a, a broad suite of management applications that I'm also interested in. And beyond that, I'll say that I'm interested in the human processes that dictate how effective management processes or management practices are. So that includes things like how we determine, uh, how we evaluate the success of management projects, how do we know if they're succeeding or failing, um, what processes can, can organizations use for strategic planning for adaptive management. So these interests I, I organize by, I'm going to organize them for you in terms of teaching engagement activities driven by three major questions. One is really about ecological impact, so looking at to what extent do managed and built environments, and this is mostly locally, regionally that I'm interested in, support biodiversity and ecosystem function. And that's things like um, agricultural systems, green infrastructure of a variety of types, in what situations do they allow for more biodiversity or more function. Um, different habitats of different sizes, and I'll say that invasive species is one of my, my primary areas of interest. Um, in terms of engagement activities. And again, this is all through student research, not my own research, but advising and instigating students to do the research I'm interested in. Um, the, the invasive species question I, I, I'm posing is what kinds of information to research and also what structures, organizational structures, funding structures, do we need to move, the, the move society, move, push the needle basically on invasive species management approaches is being less resistance focused and more resilience focused. So we're reaching a point that it's imperative to ask, why do we do landscape scale aerial spraying of herbicides? And are there alternatives and what might those alternatives look like in global change? So this involves um, creating a, 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 mass, a Michigan sustainability case on Phragmites, which was just mentioned by Bill. Um, Bill also had this acronym of SISMAs, PRISMs. These are a variety of grassroots organizations that are <coughs> geared towards invasive species management, they're really well funded in certain cases, but partnerships with academia would really support an evidence-based evidence approach for management. And then, um, I can talk slower. <laughs> and then um, the other is with the Inez, uh, we're working on an invasive species management workshop that would be held here at SEAS, bringing together a variety of partners to talk about some of these challenging issues, and at, especially state decision makers that would have a, a larger impact on policy and, and paradigms in the future. Uh, the third broad question that, that organizes my activity is really carefully thinking about these, these overlaps among student, practitioner, and research activity. And where are there interesting areas of overlap that we could do more with? For example, this is Tony Rezvacek, who's an EEB faculty and is an expert botanist. Standing in the, or sitting down in the field together with uh, someone from the Huron River Watershed Council, City of Ann Arbor Parks is there, Mapai Botanical Gardens, um, and also uh, private landscape and restoration practitioners. And they're in the field together as a way of uh, talking about some of the challenges that they're experiencing, what, they, what could they learn from each other. And this is part of a series called Professional Stewards Hike hikes that I co-coordinate with others and looking for opportunities for collaboration with that of uh, other experts to get involved and get people talking in the field. Biology on Tap is an idea still to come that's um, happening in Lansing. It's an outreach activity that would get more experts communicating what we do and how it has an impact on society and getting ideas from the public. And then really thinking about ways that students and practitioners can link up by <coughs> every year we teach a course with a lab. And instead of that lab just being for their own educational experience, can we collect data in a citizen science fashion to contribute and inform towards practice? So for example, in 509, since 2014, 
We've done a forest succession lab in Saya Woods Preserve where we learn about forest succession, but at the same time we're collecting data that informs a, um, a sugar maple thinning experimental project that the Washtenaw County is doing there. So other opportunities like that is what I would like to look for. So I'm um, looking for collaborators. I'll stop there.